tonight's lesson on how to sing John the 11th chapter. We may not go through all of these verses tonight. We might have to just skip around tonight. But we do have some points on tonight. And we use as a subject, Jesus is never late. Amen. Jesus is never late. Sometimes he seems like he'd be late. Uh, but he ain't late. Whenever he gets there, that's when things break off. That's when God to happen for you. So he ain't never late. So we learned a lot tonight about the, uh, the man called uh, Lazarus. And Jesus was on a mission to get to Lazarus, but he allowed some things to happen to Lazarus. All right. Uh, that he could reveal his power to his disciples. Amen. Uh, sometimes as disciples of, of Christ, or sometimes as Christians or, or followers of Christ, we sometimes we get lacerated and lacerated. Um, and sometimes our we flow into our unbelief to where we forget about who Jesus is. Yeah. We forget about his strength, his power, his glory, Amen. his might uh, right. that the Father bestowed upon him. And so for that cause, sometimes God allows us to go through things. Right. And right. sometimes we, we say, uh, uh, he, he, he showed up late. He didn't come when we wanted. You know, the lady, uh, this, my, one of my neighbors said that she called it the, the uh, grass cutters to come and cut the grass. And, and he didn't come when he told her. You know, and I, I reckon that to he was trying to be like Jesus. Uh, might not come when he wanted, but he's on time. Because <laughs> whenever Jesus shows up, there's something going on. There's something great going on. So we, we, we started to, uh, with, with, with uh, Lazarus on this evening, um, St. John 11, chapter, verses, uh, verses 1. It says, And a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed, the, anointed Jesus with the ointment and wiped his feet with, the, with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. After, and then after that, said unto his disciples, let us go into, into Judea again. Now, she made a point of making him know that the one that you love is sick. And the scripture here recorded that Jesus stayed still two more days. He didn't move. Amen. He had to let some things happen. Some things are happening to us. And we might feel like God ain't moving on me yet. But I'm going to let you know now that God don't move on our time. He moves on his time. Amen. God don't move on when we think he needs to do things that he think we think he needs to do. He do those things that's for his glory. Amen. You know, uh, sometimes we, we, we get out of place Amen. when we think we can move the Lord. Amen. Some things God allows to be for his glory. Uh -huh. Lazarus, we find out that he told the disciples, and I want you, this is one of my points here. Uh, he told the disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. And thou goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, There are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stone not, because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stones, because there is no light in him. These things he said after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleep. But I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death? But they 
thought that he had spoken, spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then Jesus said unto them, plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to intervene, to entertain that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Now, now, now his disciples ain't really want to go back there because they know it was trouble. You know, they took up stones and tried to try to stone Jesus. Try to stone him to death. So, so it's pretty much like the disciples thought they was on the run, but Jesus had a plan. Uh, Jesus' plan was to let Lazarus perish. Uh, you mean God will let you perish? Amen. Jesus ain't, God is, Jesus is never late. If you perish, it's to your good. If something gets lost, it's to your good because he's never late. He's always on time. Is in his plan and his will. Amen. It don't mean that Lazarus done it, and I ain't no mean you done that. Amen. Uh, it is what it, what God's plan is for our lives. We don't know, and it ain't all the time an attack of the enemy. It ain't all the time that you have done something wrong. Uh, but God want to use you. You know that was a song in that's a song in the in the in the hymns we used to sing it. You me, Lord. You me for thy servant. You me, Lord. You know, and we say you me, Lord. We don't, we don't realize what that means. He'll use you for his glory. He might use you or your sickness that I may gain some faith. Or, or he might use your sickness or your death that I might turn from my wicked way. We, we, we don't know what we're saying when we say, you, me, Lord. Uh -huh. Sometimes we holler, give me some wisdom, Lord. You don't know that sometimes you got to go through some things to get wisdom. Yeah, right. God gave Solomon wisdom. Yeah. That's right. Uh, he gave it to him. Mm -hmm. But we ask for wisdom and we ask for understanding. Uh, sometimes they come by you going through the fire. Amen. I don't care what kind of fire it is. Amen. If you go through it, you're going to feel the heat. Amen. And at certain times you're gonna get burnt. Mm -hmm. So then you understand, stay away from the fire, right? Amen. <laughs> stay out of the fire. Yeah, yeah you, you, we, we got to realize that God does nothing by happenstance. That's right. Uh, everything He does, He has a plan um, about it to establish certain things. Yeah. So we know from one thing that disciples didn't want to go back right. because they know they was headed towards uh, uh, tragedy. And, and they also, Jesus knew that Lazarus is dead now. So they didn't understand. They thought Lazarus, that Jesus was talking about Lazarus asleep. But he wasn't asleep. He was dead. He had died. And in doing that process, he had been in bond. All right. All right. I don't know what we really, the process of embalming and, and putting the grave mask on and putting the grave clothes on. That means he was the scripture as we get there, we find out he laid there for a few days and he began to be stinking. So they had already done their procedures on him and placed them in the grave. But Jesus had a point to show his disciples and show the folks that was around there that he supersedes death. He's bigger than death. Death have no power over him. Huh? We he had made it plain to us in his word that death don't have power over us. Right. Huh? Because right. we go from life right. to life. Amen. We change bodies. We change over. He, we go from this body to wherever God is. Amen. Huh? So, so, so we have no need to really fear death. But we do fear death as human beings because we never experienced death. Who want to get a last breath? <laughs> you got to give it up to go. Yeah. 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 And if you ever have seen that, it's not a good thing to see someone give their last breath. Right. Yeah, it takes something from yeah. Yeah. And so we, we, but we have to realize that Jesus supersedes death. He has a plan for us. His plan uh, for us to transcend death has already happened. We have to realize that and, and, and know enough 
to, to where when we leave this body, our spirit ain't somewhere just, just, just sleeping. We, we must realize that to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Okay. Okay. So, but this body is going to sleep. Uh, this body is steadily decaying. After a while, it won't be able to hold your spirit no more. I don't care how young he is. I don't care how old he is. When the devil angel comes, you got to you got to release this body, and the body has to release your spirit. It has to let it go. And when God become a calling, that's that's our job, part of our job, to get you ready, huh? To live. We just look at it wrong. We say you get nothing ready to live to die. No, I'm getting you ready to live. <laughs> I hope I hope your hope ain't in this body. Because the science is a proven fact. The older you get, the reason why you're getting older, your body is decaying. Amen. Yeah. Yes. I ain't going to stay there too long. I'm going to Y'all listen to this. He said, I'm glad for your sake that I wasn't there. Huh? Mm -hmm. He could have saved Lazarus before he died. He could have hid him. Healed him. And he wouldn't have had to go through this. But he allowed it to happen. Now listen to what Thomas said in verse 16. He said, Then Thomas, which is called Didymides, uh, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Y'all see that? Thomas has some mess in him. Y'all got any mess in y'all? Yes, you do. Y'all, as long as y'all live, God is steadily getting some mess in my day. But he was like, you ain't gonna wanna listen to it. Now we go over there. Now the man already dead. Ain't no need to go over there. Because they think that they have no hope in Jesus. They doubted Jesus. Why? Because he didn't do things that he wanted, that they wanted him to do. They wanted him to do miracles openly. So that he could get recognition and they could get recognition. But what he did was walk by for the hill. Later in the crowd, come back and touch it, he healed them. Don't nobody know it but them. But they wanted the world to know it. Y'all know how y'all do when y'all gonna sing a little bit. Y'all want to go to all the big program. The little program, y'all don't want to be bothered with. You want to go to the big program. Y'all been praying, or y'all got some, some, some great talent. Maybe you can cook a cake, and y'all don't want everybody to taste that cake. Come on. Huh? Come on. Somebody don't like your cake. I'm just saying. Thomas didn't like Jesus. Think about it. Somebody sitting in church now don't like the church. It always is. And it always will be. Somebody sitting around really don't like what they're in, but they, they used to. <laughs> they, they used to doing certain things. We'll move on. Y'all will start looking strong. Come on. <laughs> then he says here. Uh, he said, verse 17, he says, Then Jesus came and found that he had uh, lain in the grave for four days already. Y'all see that? Yeah. Lab. And he said, Bethany, uh, Bethany uh, was now unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha's and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. And Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was come, went to him and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Mm -hmm. You didn't come heal my brother. I know you could do it. Come on. Now I'm mad. Y'all get upset. You don't pray hard. I mean, I, I've done the same thing to God had to bring it to my to my attention. Got mad, or friends have died, family members died, and I prayed for them. Amen. And God didn't heal them. He took them. Come on. Now I'm mad. Mad is fine. Y'all ever been like that? Amen. Got upset to where you just stopped coming to church. Folks, folks said, Why don't we come to church? Man, you know, I think I need a change. <laughs> You're angry in your spirit because something happened. That's right. And God didn't fix it for you. Mm -hmm. We're here to serve God, not him to serve us. Yeah. He's not going he to move just because you call and say a few words. 
Uh, and he's supposed to move on your behalf. He see into your future. He, he has a plan of destiny for other folks' lives. Where do we fit in? And where do our lives begin? And where do we end in other folks' lives? So we all got to go away from here. Amen. So that's why you got to always be ready. Don't be quick to anger because God didn't do something for you. Or he didn't do something in your in your life that you felt like he should have done. You prayed for it. You, you're the captain saint. You been the Bible study. You preached. You done all kinds of stuff for, for the Lord. I just wanted him to do this one thing and he didn't do it. Come on. Come on. I can't tell you how many people have told me that. All right. Come on. I can't tell you how many times I have felt that. God, why you let this happen? I know I ain't been the best, but I, I've been there for you, Lord. Right. And then all of a sudden something happened that won't right. And then it spoke in my spirit one day. Who is that? Right. Right. Who is you? Yeah. I created all of this. Right. Right. I established things before you were born. Amen. Who are thou to dictate to the creator? What he gonna do and what he ain't gonna do. You know how you pray for grandma, mama, mama, dad, sister, daughter, son, and daughter. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, and they die. I hate to be blunt. It's the problem is fixed, but it ain't fixed for you. Because your loved one gone. You pray that God protect your, your, your loved one and somehow or another they was in a wreck and, and they got killed or something. They died by shootings. And I heard this all the time. Before said, if there is a God, why did he allow it? Why not? He's God. It makes him no difference. See, and, and if you really think about it, it makes you no difference because you go from life to life. It don't matter. It ain't written how you gonna die. Amen. Just because you're a Christian, you, you feel like you, a tornado shouldn't come to take you up and they find your body somewhere your spirit is with God and when the time and season come even if they don't find your body God know where it is at. he gonna raise it up y'all gotta think about it differently he gonna raise it up Jesus said he found out that Lazarus was in the grave for four days that means he done already been through the, the embalming process. He done already been through what their process was, the Jewish process was at that time. And, and, and he was forgot about because once he got in that cave, they rolled that rock in front of it. You, he died forever. Amen. So, so Martha was like, or Mary was like sitting in the house. If you just came. Mm -hmm. See, they was on only thinking about the physical aspect of Jesus. All right. Not the spiritual aspect. That he can reach down and pull your soul back into your body. Mm -hmm. See, we got that, we got the baby thing. Yeah. We, we always ask him why. Mm -hmm. Why this got to happen to me? God's teaching you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's teaching you something. With every, I had to realize with, uh, I don't have two pastors in the past. I had to realize that I had got angry with, with the prayer pad. I got angry. Then I come back here and then the Reverend Timothy pad. I still angry in my, in my spirit. So I had to realize for myself that I need to get closer to God. Yeah. Uh, because me being angry was a lack of understanding. Just like Thomas was angry about going back. Just like his loved ones, Luke, uh, Lazarus loved ones was angry because he didn't come in time. And so we have to, we have to look inside of ourselves mm -hmm. and figure out where we are spiritually. We are not, we, our, our, that, that, that persona that we broadcast forward ain't us. It's a persona. It's an image. The inside image is what God wants to work with. And every time a loved one or something happened to you in your life, or something happened to someone you love in your life, uh, we need to get closer to God to figure out what his plan is, so that he may tell us what his plan is. Amen. So that we can have an understanding, so that we don't let anger build up 
and become something else. Right. Verse 21, he said, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother wouldn't have died. That should blame him. Y'all see that? Blame, blame, blaming Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, some miles away. But if he fought the last to die, Y'all know how we do God, your father, that Jimmy Billy Bob died. But that's when he said Yeah, he said, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will what? She had faith in it. Amen. Uh, and Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. And Martha said unto him, see, what if she came out like Thomas would? Thomas had a bad attitude. And then he says, Martha said unto him, I know it that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, she was confused now by the word. He said, Jesus said unto him, I am the resurrection. I, life resides in me. And another place, he said, I am the truth and the life. And then he says, and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, what? Who shall ever live it and believe it in me shall what? Never. Believest thou this? Now y'all gotta ask y'all self that question. Do you believe it? Amen. Or you just holding on to this? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you just holding on to life, to this life. Y'all never, y'all, y'all never quit a job. Yeah, you never quit. Y'all never quit the job. Y'all ain't never, y'all always work for <laughs> I ain't going to say how many times I'm there. I quit stuff in a minute. That's my wife. Yeah, I quit. Go to another job. Wait a couple of years. Come on back. <laughs> we got to understand that when you quit that job, it's still working. Y'all okay. right. understand that? That's right. When you, when you lose faith in Christ, he's still living. Amen. He's still working. Amen. You can quit him to your devilment when you quit. Amen. That's right. Because you ain't getting paid. Amen. But when you stay with God, yeah. you're going to get paid. Yeah. He said here, he said in verse 26, and whosoever liveth, believing in me, shall never die. Mm -hmm. Eternal life. And then she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said so, she went away, went her way, and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come, and called it for thee. As soon as she heard that, arose quickly and came unto him. And Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. Then the Jews, which were in the house, now y'all listen to this. The Jews which were in the house and comforted her. When she saw Mary, she rose up hastily and went out and followed her, saying, She goes unto the grave to weep there. This is what they were thinking. And then, then when Mary, when Mary was coming to Jesus and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying, Lord, if thou hadn't been here, my brother had not died. So Mary did the same thing. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. Y'all see that? And said, Where, he, where have y'all laid? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Now, the Jews were there, just there for show. Sure. They were just there helping the family to mourn. But they didn't understand Jesus was there to raise him up. When Jesus come into your life, you dead. He come into your life and you accept him. He raises you up out of your head. He gives you new life. And he's going to do that again when you lay down his body. He's going to come and he's going to give you new life. You're not going to be dead. Your body going to be in that grave. And it's going to go to whatever it goes to. 
And then when he come in the resurrection, he gonna bring it back. I wish I could explain it to you how it's gonna be. I can't, cause I don't know. I'm limited. All I can go by is what the word said. That, that when I leave this body and get my last breath, I go on to be with him. And then one day he's gonna crack the sky and I'm gonna get up. I got hope in that. Yeah. Because see, when he gave up his life and he died, he died. They put him in the cave. And he came back and he picked that body back up. Showed his wounds in his hand and in his side and in his feet. Showed it to him. But the body won't be same. It won't be same when he came back and put his hand in his hand. This not no raising, this not no living dead, this not no, no moving, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't a zombie. man. This was Jesus. This is Jesus. Amen. And you're going to have the same opportunity when he come back. Amen. Then he says here, 35, okay. He says Jesus wept. He was crying. He won't cry for Latin. He was crying for the folk. Amen. Then he said to the Jew, then he said to the Jew, behold, he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Mm -hmm. huh? Jesus that was uh, again groaning unto himself came to the grave and the cave and, and a stone laid upon him. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Y'all see that? Uh -huh. see, 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 let me tell you, when Jesus come, he's not only talking about the stone that held Lazarus inside the grave. He's also talking about that stone that was in Mary and Martha's heart. Amen. Right. Because their brother had died. Right. Some of us got some stones that he's trying to roll away to. Yeah. Why not just go and give it, give it to him? Show him where it is. Mm -hmm. That's like they, they came to Lazarus' grave and showed Jesus where Lazarus was laid at. And he said, roll away the stone. Why not show them where your grave is in your heart? Mm -hmm. All right. Show them where your doubt is in Amen. your mind. Amen. They done rolled away that stone. Yes. Amen. So that you can be made whole. That's you right. can be made whole. That's right. He can feel that empty place, that, 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 that stony place where you got covered up. Amen. Because you were angry or you 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 had lost a little faith because he didn't move when you told when he told you to move. He didn't come when you told him to come. And you cover that spot up. Praises ain't gonna get it out. <laughs> Praises ain't gonna get it out. Prayers ain't gonna get it out. You got to give it to him. You got to show him where it's at. And say, Lord, here it is. Here am I, Lord. Fix it. Yeah. You, got, you, you, got, you got to give it to him. You can be in church trying to cover it up. All you're doing is covering it up. Huh? How many of y'all know folks? You ain't got to say that. No folks that come to church on Sunday. And when they leave out, they, they're a different person. Mm -hmm. Their lifestyle is different from what they said or what they were singing about in the church because they haven't really showed Jesus where the stone is. All of us got those places in our lives. You right. might as well come on and go with me. Every one of us got something in our lives that we keep covered up. I ain't talking about sin of iniquity. I'm talking about something in our lives that we are angry about. All right. All right. Amen. Let me tell you something, and I'll move on. When you go to a psychiatrist, what he does is he peel back those layers to figure out where the base is. Some of us have, have had that this facade for so many years. People think this is who we are, and this is not us. We ain't really let us out. Because we can't let us out. Because then people will, will find us out. They find out that we, we ain't the bitter old folks. <laughs> That's what's wrong. Some of us are angry, bitter, and bitter because of what life has given us. Right. What life has taken away from us. Right. Right. All we got to do is show Jesus where it's at. Amen. Just show him where it's at. Let it happen. We'll move on. Amen. Then he says, Take away the stone. And Martha and his sister said that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he's thinking, 
for he hath been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, uh, said, I not unto thee, if that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then Jesus took away, then they took away the stone from the place where he lay with where the dead lay. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, for thou hast heard me. He ain't even said that yet. He already know the Father gonna do it. Amen. Why? Because God sent him for this for, for the Father sent him for this purpose. Then he says here, I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm -hmm. And when he had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, huh? come forth. Then the Bible says, and he that was dead came forth. Now it's about ready to try to get him out of here. <laughs> uh, I heard about people trying in the grave at, at, at this uh, uh, at the cemetery and at, at grave size and at funerals. I heard people trying to bring the folks back to life, but God has told them. You can try it all you want. But if God ain't told you to do something, ain't nothing going to happen. Amen. But see, Jesus was sent from God to do this. So he consulted with the Father before he even did. He said, I know you hear me. But I, I do this and I talk like this so that the people would believe that you sent me. Y'all see that? And then he says here, uh, he called Lazarus forth. Not only did he call him forth, but Lazarus got up. Lazarus got up, and, and his hands and feet were bound with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him. Mm -hmm. huh? <clears throat> he got another point here. When, when you've been bound, you got that stone rolling over your heart. You come and you talk to God about it, and He rolled that stone away. Whatever devil have you, or whatever devil been influencing you, Jesus speaks in your life. The Holy Spirit comes, and He said, "Loose him, loose her, loose him." And they got to let you go, huh? Lazarus done already came back. Why? I wonder why he couldn't. Because he probably would be willing. He probably ain't know where he was. Amen. <laughs> but surely he stink. The embalming process was there. I don't know. Uh, some theologians say he was embalmed. Some say he was. Some, some say, well, if he was embalmed, then there was no blood in him. There was no life. Well, we serve a God that it don't matter which way you do it. Amen. That's right. All, all I look at is what the word said. He got up. Yeah. He was walking, but he couldn't see. Yeah. Yeah. His arms were bound, his eyes were bound, and everything. They said, loose him. Let him go. Uh -huh. But Jesus called him forth. <laughs> God can do that in your life. Yeah. He can do it in my life. Yeah. We just got to believe that he can do it. Yeah. Whatever, it, it don't have to be death. It could be something else. He can do it for you. Amen. You don't even have to be aware of it. He can do it for you. But, it, but I want you to remember that it, 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 it's left to God to do it when he want to do it, if he wants to do it. He's not going to do it just for a show. Jesus done this so that the people could see. Uh -huh. You and I, God does things for us because he loves us. He's not going to just do it just because just to show. He done already done all the proof that he going to do. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So then it says here, then the Jews which came to Mary and uh, and had seen these, seen the thing which Jesus did, believed on him. 
And y'all listen to this one right here. And then it says, but some of them went their way to the Pharisee and told them the things that Jesus had done. Then they gathered the chief priest and the Pharisee and the council and said, what do we do? Wonder why they were gathering themselves. He said, uh, for this man does many miracles. And if we let him alone, all men will believe him. And the Romans shall come and take both, take away both our place and nation. It was a good edit. For Jesus to heal the man. To bring the man from the dead. It wasn't a good edit for him to do that. Because they, politically, it wasn't a good thing. Y'all see how the politicians think? We got the politicians in the church. <laughs> I see a lot of them politicking, but they ain't got no politics. They're not politicians, but they be politicking because they feel like this ain't good for the church. Y'all see that? Raising a man up from the dead, calling his grave, we're going to close. Raising a man up from the dead. Then first you said he was too late. Mm -hmm. But he won't late. Now you got a problem because he did it. <laughs> Instead of just being happy for what he done done for you, you got a problem with what he done done. Amen. The Jews came there with purpose. They left there with purpose. They took counsel. Y'all know how we do. We always joking about the meeting after the meeting and the meeting before the meeting. <laughs> now that he done, he done shown them that it didn't matter whether he was sick or not, it didn't matter whether he died or not, he lived it now. Right. Y'all think about it. And it didn't end there. We're we going to end it here with the, 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 this scripture here, but it didn't end there. After he healed Lazarus, then he healed another man. They sought to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. See, but that was, there was proof that he had power. Mm -hmm. And there are people out here seeking to kill your blessing. Amen. Not, not because you got it, but because the enemy sees as proof yeah. that you belong to God. Yeah. Right. But Jesus ain't never late. Let him have it. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it don't even argue with folks. You ain't nothing. You ain't did this. You ain't doing nothing. Blah, blah, blah. You right. But well, why are you still here talking to me about ain't nothing? <laughs> ain't no need to argue with them. Let, them. let them have whatever it is. Let them have it their way. Because it don't stop. That song right there. The song said back in the 60s. The 60s. One monkey don't stop the party. Yeah, one well, monkey don't stop the show. <laughs> Understand that God, you in God's will and you in his plans for you, nobody can hinder you. Amen. Nobody can hinder you. Listen, Jesus had to run to keep from being stoned. In this place, this town that he was in, he had to run to keep from being stoned. So that lets you know that, that they, they trying to do something, but they, they can't stop you until it's time. Right. And if God ain't said it's time, Jesus ain't never late. He'll be there. He'll be there for you. He'll be there for you. Think about it. Any more questions or comments? Well, praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour, God, with rejoicing, Father, because of the blessing that you have imparted us upon us, upon us tonight. Yes. We come, Father, with our hearts turned towards you. We come, Father, with the great expectations of you, Father. We come, Lord, thanking you, Jesus, for all that you do, all that you've done through this whole week, through this day, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for where you're going to take us to after this lesson through this week, the rest of this week, Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will be able to go out and to share it with others, Father, as you, as the Holy Spirit directs and guides us, Lord. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.